What's up, everybody? This is John from Coding Addict, and welcome to a Redux Toolkit tutorial video. And as far as the elevator pitch for Redux Toolkit, essentially, Redux Toolkit is good old Redux, just with batteries included. Meaning, unlike traditional Redux, all the useful packages are by default part of Redux Toolkit. So instead of wasting our time on annoying boilerplate setup, we can right away get to work. During the tutorial, we're going to build this card application. And in the process, we'll see all the cool features of Redux Toolkit in action. So things like store, slice, reducers, action creators, and of course, create async thunk. As far as the requirements, if you have not worked with Redux before, my expectation is that you are at least familiar with use reducer hook, since they share a bunch of common terms and syntax. And just in case you need a refresher on use reducer, in the description of this video, I'll leave a link to my React tutorial video where I cover use reducer in great detail. If you prefer learning by building a bunch of cool projects and enjoy my teaching style, you can find all my courses at johnsmilk.com. Again, the site you're looking for is www.johnsmilk.com. In order to follow along, you will need a star and you can find it in this GitHub repo. So look for my profile, John Smilga, and the actual repo name is Redux Toolkit Tutorial. Again, the name of the repo that you're looking for is Redux Toolkit Tutorial. And once you get here, just pick the option that makes the most sense to you. I think in my case, I'm going to go for download zip option. Then I want to crack it open. And in the folder, you'll find two more folders, the final as well as the starter. And needless to say that in the final one, you'll find the complete source code. And then in the starter is where we'll do all of our work. So let me take this sucker out. Let me open up the text editor. Visual Studio Code. I'll right away set it side by side. Now this is a standard React application. I used Create React App. The only difference is that I removed some boilerplate code and I also added some resources. So in here, what we want to do is run npm install and also npm start. So npm install, npm start, and there is an app. So at the moment, notice there's only I think, two. We have some card items, which we'll use in the beginning as our data, and also a few icons. I'll discuss them a little bit later. Index CSS, all our CSS, and also, of course, index JS. So once you get the repo, once you get the star, install all dependencies, run npm start, you should see in the browser a heading two with I believe it was Redux Toolkit. And if you do, we're in good shape and we can proceed to the next step. In the starter, you'll also find a readme file where I laid out all the steps we're going to take as well as some useful links. And first, if you wanna find more info about Redux Toolkit, you can always utilize this link. So this one goes directly to their docs. And we have few ways how we can add Redux Toolkit to our project. First, we can go with straight up template. So in that case, instead of going npx create react app and then the app name, we also add this hyphen hyphen and then template and Redux. Now, from my experience, they add way too much boilerplate. So essentially, I always avoid that. And in general, I just go with the Redux Toolkit. So I set up the application, let's say with create react app, and then install the toolkit separately. And we do that with npm install, and then at redux JS, and then forward slash toolkit. And also we'll add react redux. And I'll talk about it in a second. Now, let me just quickly mention that if for some reason, you get some issues when you just run npx, create React app. And again, 
it's not specific to this template one. If something goes bananas with NPX, you can always try to go with create react app, and then the latest one. So this is just a side note. Now back to the toolkit. So when we install Redux JS toolkit, we actually install few libraries. So we install the Redux, which is going to be our core library. We also install Immer, which is going to allow us to mutate the state. We install Redux Thunk, which will handle the async actions. And also we install reselect, which will simplify the reducer setup. So these things, of course, will only make sense if you already have worked with Redux. So this is already provided for us. And of course, we'll see all of those things in action. And if you didn't work with Redux before, don't worry. Of course, I'll explain all of them. And also as an extra, we get right away Redux DevTools and also combine reducers right from the get go. Again, if you haven't worked with Redux, I totally understand if none of those things make sense, but don't worry, we'll talk about them later. Now, why we also install this package, the React Redux? Well, you see, Redux can be used with any front end framework. It's not specific to React. And in order to connect our application to the Redux, this is where we'll use the package by the name of React Redux. Now, needless to say that, of course, if you'll take a look at the package JSON, you will see the both packages, you'll see the toolkit as well as the React Redux. But just so you don't think that there is some funny business going on, let me copy this line of code. Let me install both packages. And once the install is complete, we can start setting up our Redux store. So the install is done, we go with npm start. And if we take a look at the package JSON, you will find the toolkit as well as React Redux. And with this in place, now we can start setting up our application with a Redux toolkit. Okay, and once we have installed all the dependencies up next, I want to set up the store. And you can think of store as the entire state for your application. So remember previously we used context API. Now in this case, we'll use toolkit and we'll set up the store. And the syntax is following where first we want to create store JS somewhere in the source. We want to import configure store function from the toolkit. And yes, in order to speed this up, I'll just reference it as toolkit. Please keep in mind that of course I'm talking about the Redux toolkit. And then in this function, we want to pass in the object. And in the object, there's going to be a reducer property which is going to be object itself. And then in here, we'll set up our features. And I fully understand that. I mean, this can look somewhat fuzzy. Don't worry, as we start setting up the features, you'll see everything in action. So for the time being, just bear with me. And then once we have the store, we want to export that. And this is the case where you can export this as default. So the difference, of course, is just export default and then the store or you can go with named export. And then we want to go back to index JS, we want to import store from the store file, as well as the provider from react redux. Like I said, this is the library that connects redux store or redux to our application. And similarly to context API, we want to wrap our entire application so we want to grab this provider, there's a store prop, and we just want to pass in the store coming from the store file. So let's get cracking. First, I'm going to go with store JS. In here, let's import configure store. So import, we're looking for configure store notice we right away I have a suggestion for that. And then let's set up that store. Like I said, at the moment, it might look somewhat funky, the moment we'll set up some features, it will make sense. So let's go here with const. And of course, I'm adding export as well, then store, and that is equal to configure store, let's pass in the object, let's set up the reducer is an object itself. And for time being, 
it's going to be empty. And most likely we'll get the warning in a console. Don't worry about it. Again, all of this functionality is coming up. And then let's navigate to index.js. Let's import both of the things. Let's go with import then store. And this is coming from the store file, of course. And also we want to get that provider. So we import and then we're looking for provider. Now that is coming from React Redux. And now let's wrap our entire application. So let's say provider here. Let's close it out. Let's wrap our app. And then we want to set up a store prop and we want to set it equal to our store. And if nothing breaks, we are heading in the right direction. So then we can set up the slice. Again, like I said, if you see this warning, don't worry, we'll fix it in a second. Beautiful. And once we have the store in place, now let's set up the slice. And I fully understand that this name is totally funky. You're like, what slice are you talking about? And I want you to think of slice as the feature of your application. So if we take a look at the complete project, you'll notice that yes, we have the cart functionality. But we also have the modal. And you can think of it as two features our application. So we have one feature for the modal. And the second one is going to be for our cart. And of course, the bigger our application, the more features we're going to have. And in the Redux toolkit land, it is called slice. Now, in order to set up slice, a common convention is to set up features folder. But of course, naming is always up to you. Then whatever is going to be the name of the feature. So in my case, it's going to be card. That's why I'll set up a card folder. And then we want to set up a file. Again, like I keep mentioning the naming is up to you. But again, typically, you'll go with whatever feature and then slice JS. Now in there, you will want to get create slice and don't worry about this one that create async thunk. As I say not, I'll remove it. We'll worry about that later. And then we want to invoke that function, create slice, we want to give it a name. Again, it's totally up to you. But in my case, I'm going to go with cart. And then we have initial state property, where we just set up whatever state we want. In my case, I'll set it up as a separate object. And in here, I'm going to go with cart items, then amount. So how many items I have in a cart? What is the cart total? Both of them zero. And then is loading true? Because eventually we will load this from the API. Then I'll log the sucker, the cart slice. And in there, we'll have the reducer. And of course, I'll talk about this one a little bit later once we get there. And eventually, what we want to do is in the store, we want to import cart reducer. So that's going to be the function that controls this state in our slice. So think of our application. We'll just split up the functionality where this slice is just responsible for the cart. And this reducer specifically is going to modify it, whatever functionality we set up. And then in that reducer that we set up in the last video, notice there's a complaint that there's no valid reducer. Now we want to set up a key. Now key name is really up to you, just like everything else. And I know that you're probably sick of hearing this, but I just want to make this clear where this is totally up to you. You can call this banana pudding if you want. Just remember that later, once we start setting up our functionality, yes, of course, we'll have to access this name. So therefore, I'm going to go with cart and I want to set it equal to reducer. So the function that we'll have access to and the function that will allow us to control this piece of state for this specific functionality. Hopefully this is clear. So now let's go to source. We want to create a new folder. Like I said, common convention, we'll call this features. So features our application, in our case, cart and modal, then let's create another folder. And we're going to go here with cart, then inside of the cart, let's go with new file. And we're going to go with cart slice JS. So once we're here, we want to import, we want to import and we'll say, create and slice. Now, for some reason, it does not. Oh, yep, it does. So I have the suggestion. And let's right away invoke it. And I'm going to call this const cart and slice. And that is equal to create slice, 
it's a function we pass in the object and here we can set up a bunch of properties so first we want to set up the name so i'm going to go here with card then we want to go with that initial state and this is the case since i have more properties might as well set it up as a separate object so let's set up here initial state and then we'll add card items which initially is going to be empty array but then we'll take a look at multiple approaches the local data and then the data coming from the api i also want to go with amount so how many items i have in the cart and please be aware that i'm not just talking about the products i have in my cart i'm actually looking for the item count so how many items of that specific product i have and this is going to be that amount hopefully that is clear then we want to go with total so total money both of them zero initially and then is loading because eventually we'll pull this from the api so that's going to be our initial state once we save notice right away initial state in here references the initial property and then we want to log this sucker and we want to quickly import in the store.js now in a second we'll do more proper setup i just want to showcase what we have in the cart slice so let me save it then i'll navigate back to the store and for time being let's just import the entire file like i said more proper setup is coming let's just go here with the features then cart and then cart slice and once we import of course we right away invoke the file and here we'll see that console log so we'll have some actions here something that we'll discuss a little bit later once we set up some reducers we have case reducers again something we don't need to worry about right now get initial state again a function that gets the state name and then notice all the way in the bottom we have that reducer so this reducer is the one that is going to control that state in this slice and that's why we want to export that we want to export this and in the store we want to come up with a key and set it equal to that reducer so let's try this out i'm going to go with cart then instead of just getting the file i'll actually look for that reducer but i'll set it up as a default one so for time being i'll comment this one out we'll come back to this one because again we'll talk about these actions eventually and now i just want to export that reducer now there's million ways how we can export us in this case i'm going to go export default and then cart slice dot reducer again this is an object and this is a property so let's export this then in the store we want to import so i'm going to go with cart not slice but reducer again if you want to name this differently of course you can and then we're going with from and now we'll go with cart equals to cart reducer and we shouldn't see any error messages anymore because now we have the proper setup so now we can take a look how we can access the data first from that initial state and then of course eventually we'll also take a look at how we can set up functionality to control this but our first step is going to be accessing this data okay and um, before we go any further let's also quickly install redux dev tools and the good news is that as far as the code we don't need to add any configuration basically the moment we install redux toolkit we're good to go however when it comes to browser we do need to install extra extension and the extension you're looking for is this one redux dev tools and in the chrome if you want to install extension just go to your extensions and then more specifically look for open chrome web store and then in here look for the redux one not the redux 4k apologies redux so this is the extension you're looking for and once you do that let me open this up in the big browser so that's my localhost 3000 you'll notice a tab a redux tab and in here we'll be able to find a bunch of useful info now at the moment i mean we have a clean application we only have the state but yes eventually once we set up the reducers the actions and all that yes this is going to be a very useful tool now at the moment the only thing that i want to showcase is that this is our state notice that's my cart cart items amount total and is loading and yes of 
course, in our store, once we add more reducers, all of them will meet over here. And that's why this tool is very useful, because as we'll dispatch our actions, we'll clearly see how our state changes. Beautiful. And once we have set up the Redux DevTools, up next, let's see how we can access that initial state in any of the components. So we have the initial state in the slice. And let's say that I want to set up a navbar component where I want to access the amount. And the setup is following where we do want to create the components folder, then navbar.js. And in there we'll import cart icon. So that's the component that's coming from the icons folder. And I'll discuss how we can set up the component in the following video, because at the moment I do want to focus on the state value access. And then we want to import use selector. So that's a hook coming from react redux. And then in the navbar component before the return, we want to invoke use selector. And the selector is looking for one thing, it's looking for the function. And as a parameter, we get access to the entire state. So we're talking about the entire store. Again, in our case, we just have the cart, but eventually, we'll add more reducers over here. So since this is a parameter, of course, we can call it whatever we want. So you'll see probably state. But actually, my preference is to call this a store, because that signals to me that that is entire store. So the entire state of my application. And then more specifically, I'm looking for dot cart wire, because that's the name of the property over here. And then in initial state, if you remember, we do have the amount property. And of course, there's a million ways how we can set this up. For example, we can just return from this function this amount, or since in this case, we are returning the entire object, we can just structure it. So let's try to set this up. Where in the source, I want to create a new folder, and I'm going to call this components over here. Then let's set up that nav bar nav bar js in here like i said first let's import cart icon something i'm going to discuss in the following video then we also want to get that use selector so let's say use selector hook that is coming from react redux and now let's set up that nav bar component so i'm going to use my extension i'll set up the nav bar and first let's set up the return and then we'll worry about the actual state. So let's say here nav, I do want to add here a div. So inside of the div, let's go or I'm sorry, inside of the nav, let's go with div, let's add a class name of nav center. And here we want to go with heading three redux toolkit. And after that, let's save it. And we don't see anything. So let me refresh. Don't see anything in the browser. And of course, the reason for that is because I didn't import in the app.js. So let me go back. And in the app.js, let's import the nav bar. And then let's set it up over here. So what I want to do, as far as the return in app.js, I just want to go with main, and then the nav bar. So instead of the heading to Redux toolkit, we'll go with main tags. And then first, we'll set up the nav bar, and then we'll set up rest of the card items as well. So that should be our navbar. Okay, that's awesome. And as far as the other stuff, I think I'm going to go here with a card icon, but that is going to be placed in the nav container. So right after this heading three, I'm going to go with div, with a class of nav container. And in here, let's set up that card icon. Yep, that is how it's going to look like. And then let's go with div with the class of amount container, and then paragraph with a class of total, total hyphen and amount. And at the moment, let's just place a zero here. Let's save this. And now let's see how we can access the entire state of our application. So first, let's just log the sucker. Let's say use selector. 
So that's the hook. And like I said, it's looking for one parameter, which is going to be our function. And then inside of this function as a parameter, we get that entire store. So for time being, I'm going to call this store and I'll log it. I'll say that the only thing that I want to do in this function is log the store. And what you'll notice in the console is our entire state, which is just awesome, if you ask me. So take a look over here. We have card items, we have amount, and we have the total. So again, I know I'm repeating myself, but essentially the idea is that using this use selector, notice how we don't need to pass anything coming from the specific slice or nothing like that. We can right away in this function access our entire store. And essentially what we want to do, we want to return something. Whether that is specific property, for example, amount, or of course you can return the entire card and then you can destructure. So first let's just set it up where we return the amount so notice over here we have undefined in line five because we're not returning anything from this function yet. And let's set up over here in the paragraph. And then we'll take a look at the, the structuring option as well. I don't think I'm going to leave this for your reference because again, we'll set up multiple ways anyway. So first let's go with amount. And that one is equal to, let's again invoke use selector. Let's pass in the function. And I'm going to be setting up the arrow function. And I'll go right away with implicit return. So again, in here, we're accessing the entire state of our application. And we go with store cart, because that's the property value. And yes, once we add more reducers in our store, then of course, we'll be able to access it. So if I'm going to go here, let's say with modal, and I'm not going to pass anything in because I do need to set up the reducer. And of course, we'll be able to access with store dot model. Hopefully that is clear. And this is very, very useful because again, we don't need to import anything specific from that slice. We have access to entire store. And then let's go with amount. So this is what I'm returning from the function. And probably it's not going to be surprising if I pass here the value. It's still going to be zero. Now let's test this out though. Let's go to our features slice and let's change this around. Let's say that there's going to be five items. The one when I save, notice. Now, of course, I have this value of five. So we know that our functionality works. And like I said, there's a million different ways how we can set this up. And one of them is actually the structuring. So I know that I can return store.cart, which is essentially a object, correct? And then Inside of it, I have the amount property. So this is also valid. Notice value did not change and we didn't get any bugs. So that's how we can access data from our slice. We need to pick the component. We need to use a use selector. In here, we pass in the function. And as a parameter, this function gets the entire store. And then we just need to pick what we want to return. In my case, I want to return cart from this function. It is an object and it represents this initial state. And more specifically, I'm looking for the amount. That's why I destructure it and then I display it here in the return. As far as the icons in this project, I decided to go a different route where I use the hero icons site. So once you navigate there, you'll notice a bunch of nice icons. And essentially, I just set them up as components. So let me show you with one and then you will understand the general concept. Just pick the icon you want. In this case, I think I'm going to go with this band one. And as far as I noticed, there's really no difference whether you go with JSX or SVG. So let me just copy this one. Let's navigate back. And then in the icons, you'll notice full blown component that I will right away export. So let me keep scrolling and I'm going to call this testing. So I'm going to say export const. And that's going to be my testing component. And in here, you just want to set up the value you want to return. So this essentially will be the icon. Now I am styling it though, 
in CSS and in a second you'll see what I mean. So I have this testing icon right now. So that's the return that I just copied. So now let's navigate to the navbar since I already have the import for the cart icon. And let's set up over here the testing one as well. And we can place it anywhere we want. So let me put it side by side. And you'll notice that this is a giant or I'm sorry, well, I already applied the styling. So maybe this is not going to work over here. Maybe let me set up here the fragment and then you'll see what I mean. So let me move the sucker down again. This is just temporary, you don't have to follow along. But you'll notice that if we don't apply the styling, we'll get this massive icon. Basically, that's the default that they provide. So in the styles in the index CSS, I added some styling for specific icons. So now I'm talking about the cart icon. And also the same applies for these ones over here as well. So not only you'll need to get the icon, but notice over here, I applied some width, as well as the color. And of course, you can add more styles. So essentially, that's how I set up my icons where I created icons JS. And in here, you'll find three icons. So one for the cart, and then the other ones for the actual cart items. And then I imported the icon from the hero icon. So I set it up as a component, I export, and then I import in any of the components that I want. And then I just need to apply a little bit of styling and you want to target the SVG. So now let me remove the testing one. And also let me remove it from the icon since we won't use it. And now let's proceed to the next step. All right, and up next, let's work on our car items. So at the moment, it is empty array. However, I did prepare an array of products just so we can set up the initial functionality. Yes, eventually, we'll fetch this data from my API. And in the process, we'll practice of how we can set up asynchronous operations in Redux toolkit. But for the time being, this will be hard coded data. And it is located in the card items. And as you can see, it is an array, where each item is an object with some properties. So what we're going to do, we're going to set up the initial state equal to that array. So of course, we just need to import, and then we'll repeat the same steps, like we did with an amount in the navbar. However, since we have an array, we'll have to iterate over and all of that cool stuff. So first, what I want to do is go to the cart slice, and we want to import, we want to import those cart items. So let's go here with cart items, it is a default export. So it doesn't really matter how we call it here. And then we need to go two levels up, we're looking for the cart items. And in here, where we have the initial state, let's set up cart items equal to cart items. Now, if we want to see that we can either go to the nav bar, since in there we have the use selector, and we can, of course, log it or we can take advantage of the Redux dev tool. So let's navigate here. Let's refresh, just so we're on the safe side. And if we navigate to the Redux dev tools, now what you'll notice that card items in the card is an actual array. And like I said, each object represents that item with a bunch of useful properties. So our next step is going to be setting this up in the app JS, where we'll grab them, we'll iterate over, and then for each item, we'll return a component with the image, the title, and the rest of the stuff. Not bad, not bad. So we set up the card items equal to an actual array, instead of an empty one. Now let's set up two more components, the cart container JS and cart item JS. And just to showcase, so this is going to be the container where we'll have all of the items as well as the total and the clear cart functionality. Now eventually we'll add the modal, but the idea won't change. If we click on clear cart, then of course we'll have empty cart. And then we also want to set up that cart item, where again, we'll display all of this info. 
And yes, we'll practice on use selector again. We're in the card container. We not only want to get the car items, we also want to get the total as well as the amount because we'll use that amount to display some things conditionally. In this case, if the amount is less than one, then we'll display this. And then if there are some items in a the card, then of course there's going to be a different logic. And in the card item, we'll just pass in the ID as a key, as well as the properties of the item. And then we'll just structure it. Now, when it comes to card item, for the most part, we'll get there our action creators, which of course, we'll set up a little bit later. So for now, we just want to worry about rendering the card items on the screen. So let's get cracking where I want to go to components. And let's go here with cart container JS. And I also want to set up that cart item JS. Now when it comes to cart item, we'll work on that one in the next video for a moment. And as I said, it shouldn't be cart items should be cart item one. And now let me fix this one as well, where I'm going to go with cart item. Now we want to import that in the cart container. So let's set up this component as well. So R A F C E. And let's right away import that cart item. So let's go here with cart item. So then we want to navigate to the app JS. And we also want to get that cart container. So let's get that one. And I'll place it right after the container, meaning the nav bar, sorry. And we should see on the screen cart container. Awesome. Now what's next? Well, let's take a look at the readme where we do have the cart item. We also want to get the use selector. And now from my application state, I want to get the entire cart and I'll just the structure cart items total as well as the amount. Like I said, the amount we'll use to display conditionally empty cart. And again, I already showcased that, but let me show you one more time. This is what we want to set up if the cart is empty, and we'll control that with the amount. Now, if there are some values in the cart, then this is what we want to return. We want to go with section header, iterate over cart items. And then also in the footer, we want to display the total with the clear cart button. So let's set this one up, where I'm going to go with import, then use selector from React Redux. Let's right away access all of the items. So let's say here const we're looking for cart and then items. Total. Also, we want to get the amount. And all of that is equal to use selector. Let's pass in the function. And what we want to return, we want to go here with store or state, however you want to call it, store and then cart. So we get all of those values right away let's set up that condition where i'll say amount is less than one if that is the case what we want to return well we want to go here with section then let's add a class name of cart and let's set up some logic over here let's say here header and inside of the header we'll have a heading to your bag and then right after that let's go with heading four and we'll say empty cart now we do need to add here empty cart class. And let's add a text your cart is currently empty, or your bag is empty. Let's save it. Now, since the amount is zero, this is exactly what we display. So in order to see the items, of course, we'll have to navigate back to the cart slice. And again, for the time being, we'll just hard code this. Don't worry, eventually, we'll set up some action creators that control this logic, essentially, we'll set up some reducers. And by default, Redux toolkit is going to give us those action creators. So let's go back to the cart container. And right after this one, we want to set up another return. So as you saw, this one was if we have less than one. And now since we hard coded, we have four. So in here, we want to go with another return another section. And we do want to the class. So class will be equal to cart. And 
then the same deal we want to set up that header. So header over here. And inside of it, we're just going to go with heading to your bag, your bag, let's say that one. And yeah, as I said, no, this is wrong. So it should be class name. Then we want to iterate over the card items. So for time being, we just want to set up a div, then we want to grab those card items, we want to run the map. Again, this is the actual array, correct. And then for every item, we want to return that card item that we just set up. And we want to pass in the data. Now on a screen, we'll just see that text, whatever we have over there. So in here we have the card item, but eventually, yes, we'll access it and we'll correctly display it. So we're mapping over, I'll call this item. So now I'm talking about each and every object over there. Let's go with a return. Then let's set up a cart item. We do need to pass in the key since this is react and I already know that there is a an ID property. Now if you don't believe me, you can navigate over here. And you'll clearly see that. So each and every item has that ID property. So let's say here dot ID. And then I want to use the spread operator dot dot dot, and then pass in rest of the properties. Let's save it. So since we have four items, we have four cart items on the screen. And then right after this one, right after this div, let's set up a footer. And this is where we'll display the cart total, as well as the clear button cart, which eventually will invoke the model and clear the cart. So I'm going to go with a horizontal line here. Then let's add a heading to with some data. So total span and set of this one, I want to set up a dollar sign. I'll say total. Yes, the moment it is going to be zero. Don't worry about it. And as I know, I actually messed it up over here, it should be div with a class of cart total. My apologies. That's why the CSS is not correct. And after that, we want to go with that clear card button. So still within the footer, we want to go with the button. Let's add a class right away. So BTN, clear BTN. And let's say clear card. Let's save this. Let's refresh so we don't have any errors. And this is what we should see on the screen. Where again, we used use selector to access our entire store. More specifically, we looked for cart, which represents that initial state. In the initial state, we have all of these values. So we were able to the structure, and then we check for the amount. If it's less than one, we display the message. If we have some items in there, then we just iterate over them. And for every item, we return that card item. And then below that, we have total, which at the moment is zero, eventually, this will be dynamic, as well as the clear card button, which eventually will remove all the items from the cart. Awesome. And up next, I want to set up the cart item, where we're passing in all of the data from the cart items. So we go here with dot 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 an item, basically, we spread out all of the properties so we can access them, of course, here, when we destructure the props. And then we just want to set up some return with image title, and rest of the stuff. Yes, of course, none of the buttons at the moment will work. But at least we'll have a better looking card item. And also we want to get two icons from the icons, we want to get rest of them the chevron down and chevron up. So I'm going to navigate to the card item first, let me grab both of them, let me get the import, then we're looking for chevron down and chevron chevron up. After that, we want to go and the structure all of the props. So we're looking for ID, image, title, price, as well as the amount. And as far as the return, let's start over here with simple article. So we want to go here with article, and then let's add a class of cart item. So then we want to go with image and the source will be the image. So let me say here, dynamically image and as far as the alternative, well, we have the title for that. So let's save it and we should see the images. And if we do, 
And of course, we can proceed to the next step. After that, we want to set up a div. Heading four is where we'll display the title. So let's save that. And then we also want to set up the price. So let's say here heading four with a class of item price, which comes with a little bit of styling. And then I'll add the dollar sign and I'll say price. Let's save that. Then we want to set up the button. So right below, we'll go with button, then class and remove hyphen BTN. And we'll say remove, let's say that. And then we just want to set up those buttons to increase or decrease the amount. So we want to do that right after this div. So this is where we set up the heading fours and the button. But after that, we want to go with another div, there's going to be no class. But we want to set up a button. Let's call this amount hyphen BTN. And then let's add that icon over here. So in this case, I want to go with Chevron up, let's close it. Okay, good. Then we want to copy and paste and set up the Chevron down. So the class is going to be the same amount button in here, we just want to say Chevron down and in between them. This is where we'll place the amount. So let's say here, paragraph class name, amount, and we want to render the amount. So say amount over here, let's save that. And for all of them, we have one. Of course, in the following videos, we'll set up the functionality that allows us to change that. And with this in place, now we can start slowly adding our first reducers. Okay, so how we can set up the functionality with Redux toolkit. So if you remember previously, we need to set up the action, we need a dispatch, and then we always always needed to return a new state, and then just of course, copy the values and all that. Now, this is not the case with Redux toolkit. In fact, it's much, much, much easier. And the way we can do that, we simply go with a reducers property in the slice. And again, key value pair. So in my case, I'm going to call this clear cart. So that's going to be the name of my reducer over here. Now as a parameter, this function gets a state. And notice how we don't have to return anything. I don't have to return the new state and always avoid the mutation. Basically, remember with use the reducer, we always, always, always needed to return a new state, we don't have to do that right now. Why? Because when we installed Redux toolkit, we also installed Immer library, which behind the scenes, does all the heavy lifting. So in our case, we can modify the state or mutate the state directly. And yes, you're not hallucinating. This is clearly the code that mutates the state. The reason we can write such code is because Redux toolkit comes with Immer library. Now it's also really cool that if we take a look at cart slice, something that we're logging right now, in the cart slice JS, we have actions. And the moment we create that reducer, we'll be able to see the action created by the name of yes, exactly the same clear cart. And what that means is that we don't need this code. Again, remember with use reducer, we set up the action, we set it equal to string. And we didn't set up the action creator per se when we used use reducer. But the idea would be that we actually set up a function that returns that type. So we don't need to run around with this variable, basically have right away a function and optionally, we can also pass in the payload. Now, why am I saying this? Because now we can directly use this clear cart. We don't need to set up the variable. We don't need to create the function. Essentially, it's already provided for us. And then in order to invoke it, we need to get another hook from the react redux. And this is use dispatch. So remember, with user reducer, we use dispatch. In this case, we right away get it. If we invoke use dispatch, and then we invoke dispatch. So whatever we're getting back from here, and we just pass in action creator. So yes, we do need to import clear cart. That's why we're exporting over here, notice export cons and then named import, or I'm sorry, named export. And then we just need to use it. 
And don't worry if some of this seems confusing at this point. It will make total sense once we complete the entire setup. So first, I want to navigate to cart slice. And like I said, we want to start over here by setting up that reducer, the one that is going to clear the cart. So let's go here with reducers. And it's going to be an object. Inside of it, we just need to come up with name for our reducer. In our case, it's going to be clear cart. It's going to be a function that gets the access to the state. Now, also we'll have access to the payload. Basically, let's say we want to pass in the ID, something we'll do a little bit later, which is going to be a second parameter. For now, we don't need to worry about it. I'll set it up as a arrow function. And like I said, I know I keep repeating this, but we can mutate the state directly because behind the scenes, Immer takes care of that. So we can go here with state. Then what is the value here? It is card items. What do I want to do? I want to set it equal to an empty array. That's it. That's all I want to do. And now let's go to the card slice. Let's uncomment the log. And we'll see in the console that yes, we have name and all that. But now in the actions, we have a function. We have action creator by the name of clear card. And again, the beauty in this is the fact that we don't need to set up anything manually as far as the action, as far as the action creator, we right away get it by default. And the only thing we want to do is pass in the clear cart function into whatever we're getting back from the dispatch. So use dispatch and then pass it in. So let's go back to the slice. And instead of logging, which as I said, I'll comment this out, we want to go with export const so all of these will be named and yes we'll add more functions of course over here and let's go with clear cart and now where are we looking we're looking in the cart slice dot actions so let's set it equal to cart slice dot and actions so from that object we export this and now we just need to decide well in which component we're going to use it and of course in our case that will be cart container Yes, eventually we'll set up the modal. So we will move that functionality from the cart container to the modal. But for now, let's just see how we can invoke it in here. So let's say use this patch. That's the first one, then comma. And below or above, it doesn't really matter. We want to go with that use dispatch. So const this is going to be equal to dispatch whatever we get back, use dispatch invoke, we don't need to pass anything in. Then let's keep on scrolling, keep on scrolling. This is where we have our button. And now we do want to pass in the arrow function, because of course, I don't want to invoke this immediately. I only want to invoke it when we click on a button. So let's say here, on click. Then let's pass in the arrow function. And we'll say that every time we'll click on a button, we'll dispatch an action. And in here, let's pass in that clear card. Again, the beauty here is that we don't need to do all of that manual labor. We just pass in the function that as a side note, I didn't import. So let me go back, we want to go with clear card, which is coming from the cart slice. Now let me save it. And in here, it says unknown event handler, because I probably did some oh, yeah, this is not right. And once we click, this is what we'll see. Now we're not displaying this one, the condition simply because we're not controlling the amount yet. Don't worry, all of that is coming up. For time being, we are just displaying the heading two with your bag here. And the total basically, since we removed all of the items, since it's set equal to an empty array, we just have the your bag and the total. And with this in place, now we can set up rest of the reducers. And while we're still on a topic of state management in the Redux toolkit reducers, let's also cover an alternative option. And that is simply the fact that we can return a new state from the reducer. So let me comment this one out. Let me type here return. But we need to be aware of the major gotcha. And that is following whatever we will return from reducer as our new state, 
will become the new state. So let's say if I'm going to return a, an empty object, yes, our state will immediately turn into an empty object without any of these properties. Same works if I'm going to return here, empty array. So let's say if I return an object, and if I just say cart items equals to an empty array, yes, I will update this property. But automatically, I'll remove these ones. Just to showcase that, let me save it. Let me click on clear cart, and you'll notice that now I have nothing here as far as the amount, as well as the total. And I can clearly see that if I navigate to the DevTools. So let me open up the Redux DevTools on a small browser window. And then when it comes to our state, notice all of the properties are missing now. Only the cart items is there. So let me comment this one out and let's take a look at the use case where this is going to come in handy. So in one of our upcoming projects, we'll have some pages and in there we'll have a bunch of inputs that are going to be our state values. And essentially there's also going to be a clear button. And the idea is like this. Once the user starts typing something, let's say changes some values around here, at some point, maybe he or she wants to clear out all the input values. So in that case, we're going to take that initial state. And we'll just return that from our reducer. So let's say you set up here state with whatever default values. And then when you have the reducer that just sets it back to default, you just pass that initial state as a return in your reducer. So that's one of the use cases where this comes in handy. But we do need to be careful. Again, whatever we're going to return from the reducer will become that new state value. So if we omit some of the properties, yes, they will be excluded. Okay. And once we can clear the cart, it's a smooth sailing from here. We just want to set up those functions. We want to add the functionality. And yes, we will take a look at the action, what it looks like and why we're looking for the payload. And I know I said this already a million different times, but since right now, we can modify the state directly. There's tons of ways how you can set this up. Now, I purposely kind of tried to showcase the mutation approach, where yes, of course, in these examples for increase and decrease, we can return a new array. But I purposely just found the exact item and then updated the amount plus or minus. And also, of course, you can combine increase and decrease into one function, let's say you can call this toggle. And of course, you'll just have to provide here more values, whether you're increasing decreasing. that could be your challenge. For now, we just want to focus on a remove item. And the first thing that I want to showcase is the fact that we can access the payload. So whatever we pass in, because in order to get the specific item in order to remove it, I do need to get the ID. Correct. And if you were paying attention in the card item, we did the structure ID. However, we haven't used it here. So this is something that we will pass into the function. And essentially, as far as the remove item, I'll get it from action that payload because that is a structure, I'll name this item ID. And then I just want to set equal state card items to the new array. Now I wasn't doing this purposely. Again, there's tons of ways how you can set it up. But in my case, I just thought that filter is the fastest one. So we go to state dot card items, we filter it, we look for a specific item that does not match the ID. And we return that into this card items. So if the ID matches, so whatever we pass in matches to the ID, then that item won't get returned. And in the process, we'll move it from this array. So let's try this one out where in the cart slice, let's set up that remove item. So I'm going to go here with remove item. And first, I just want to showcase how we can access the payload. So first one, 
is the state. So we access the state here. Then I'm going to go with action. And later I'll showcase how we can structure that. And for time being, let's just look for the action. And now let's think about it. Where do we want to access all of these functions? They remove items, increase, decrease, and not calculate totals. So only these three. Well, we want to get that in the card item. So first, in the card slice, we want to export that. Again, what's really cool is the fact that the name is exactly the same. We don't really need to think about it. And as I said, it shouldn't be remove items. It should be remove item. My apologies. For some reason, I just keep adding those S's there. Then let's navigate to the card item. First, we want to import the remove item. So we're looking for remove item. And notice how right away we get that named import. And also we want to get that dispatch. So let's just set it up over here, where we'll say import, then use dispatch that is coming from react redux, then the very top, we're going to go here with const dispatch. And that will be equal to use dispatch, let's invoke it. And then let's look for that remove button. So now basically, every time we'll click on a button, we will remove that specific item. So let's say here on click. Again, we do want to pass in the arrow function first. And then let's say dispatch. And we'll go with remove item. And now let's pass in the ID. So first thing what you'll see, once you click is the log in the console. So let's click and check it out. In here, we see two things. First, we see type. So notice how that is right away already set up for us. Like I said, we don't need to do anything right away has cart and then remove item. So this is the action that we're dispatching. And we also get the payload. Now, can you pass in the payload as an object? Absolutely. But if we pass in as a simple property, then we have payload is equal to whatever. So knowing this, we can set up rest of the functionality, where in the cart slice, I'll assign action that payload equal to an ID, the const, and I think I'm gonna call this product ID, or sorry, no, I'll call this item ID. So const item ID is equal to action payload. And then let's set up the new value for the state cart items. State again, yes, we're modifying this. We're gonna go with cart items is equal to, and now let's access the old value, basically before the update. And we can do that with state card items, then let's run filter. And like I said, if the ID matches, the item won't be returned. So essentially, we'll remove it from our cart items array, I'm going to call this items. And I'm going to go with implicit return where I'm going to say, if item ID does not match the item ID only then return it from the array. And as a result, check it out, you can click. And we just keep removing the items from our bag. Again, yes, we're not affecting the amount, as well as the total, all of that is coming up. But we should be able to remove all of the items from our cart, be it with clear cart, or individually by clicking on the remove button. All right, and now once we're familiar, or we can remove item. Let's also do the same thing with increase and decrease. Now in order to make things interesting, I already destructured the payload. So remember, we're getting the action object, and we're looking for the payload. So in this case, I just destructured that in the case of increase, we go with state card items find. So we get that specific item, in this case, where the ID matches, unlike the filter approach. And then I just want to update the amount. So every time we'll click on the increase button, we'll increase the amount of specific items we have in the cart for this phone or that phone. And hopefully you see where I'm going with this. And eventually, of course, this will also affect the amount as well as the total. And yes, I'll set them up pretty much right away since the functionality is exactly the same apart from the fact that in this case we increase 
and in this case we decrease and like i said if you want to challenge yourself set up a toggle functionality where you look for one more value increase or decrease which of course is going to be in the payload and then depending on that set up the functionality but for now let's just worry about these two so we're going to navigate to cart slice and then right after the move item let's say here increase we'll set up our function we'll say state like i said we'll right away look for the payload we'll set it equal to and when it comes to functionality we want to go with const first we want to get that cart item the specific one where the id matches and we can do that with state cart items dot find then let's pass in the callback function let's say item and then item id is equal to payload and we'll pass this in as an object so it's going to be payload dot id and then let's increase that amount so now i'm accessing that one specific card item I have the amount property and please don't confuse this with the total amount so that's the total with all of the items that we have in a cart when we are talking about this cart item amount property we're talking about this one over here for that specific cart item and we'll just say cart item amount so whatever it is right now plus or yeah in this case plus one and then in order to set up decrease we want to copy and paste you want to go with decrease still going to be a payload okay all of that is awesome we'll still look for the card item the difference here is minus one and then we want to add them of course to our exports so let's say increase decrease and we want to navigate to the cart item we want to import the other two as well so we want to go here with increase then decrease both of them and first let's set up the increase because for a decrease we'll have to add a little bit more functionality so let's go with mount button let's say on click we already have dispatch so we don't need to worry about that one and we just want to pass in the increase so we're going to go here with dispatch and then inside of dispatch let's pass in the increase and like I said, in order to make this interesting, I'm going to go with an ID. Now, normally, if you're setting this up as an object, of course, you'll pass in more properties. But in this case, I won't do that. And for some reason, oh, yeah, my bad. So I set up the import in the wrong place. Let me add a comma here. And hopefully everything is going to work. Yep, looks about right. And if we try this out, notice how again... We're changing this value over here for each item and again the functionality here is following where we look for the payload which in this case is an object that's why we go here with payload dot id just to showcase that we can pass in more data and then we just increase the amount and the same thing we can do with decrease so let's go back to the card item i'll take this entire thing for the on click we'll copy and paste and now let's go with decrease instead so say decrease again we pass in the id that doesn't change let's refresh so we start from the scratch and now notice how we can decrease the amount now the problem is that we're going negative so i think it's going to make a bit more sense if we'll check for the amount and again we're talking about the amount of specific item not overall amount and if it is equal to one, we want to remove it since that way we'll have zero items in the cart. And if it's bigger than one, then of course we just want to run the decrease. So I'm going to go back to this on click and we'll set up if amount is equal to one. That means that we're pressing the button, amount is already equal to one. And if that is the case, well, we might as well remove the item from the cart, correct? We'll say remove item. And we'll just pass in the ID. Now we do want to pass the return right after because you don't want to continue reading the code. And if the amount is bigger than one, then of course 
we just decrease the amount. So let me go here, let me refresh and notice. I can increase, I can nicely decrease, so all of that is working. But the moment I get the amount of one, if I will click the decrease, I'll automatically remove the item from the cart. All right, and up next, let's take a look at how we can calculate the totals because at the moment, yes, we can nicely control our cart, but that is not affecting the amount that we have all the way at the top. And also it's not affecting the total. And in order to fix that, we'll come up with new reducer, we'll call this calculate totals. And I went with this functionality. So I created new variables, amount and total, then I iterate over the current cart items, and each of them has the amount property. So I just add to the overall amount one. So the one that represents the entire cart, and the same goes for a total, only in this case, I multiply the amount of items I have with the price, and that is equal to the total one. So I set up the loop, I add both of these values. And at the very end, I just go with state amount is equal to amount. So whatever we created over here, the same goes for total. Now, where do we want to invoke that? Well, that's a good question. Let's keep on scrolling in the readme. And I actually set this one up in the app. So in the app, I will set up a use effect. And that use effect will depend on the card items. So use use selector, grab the card items from the cart. And then every time there's going to be some change in the card items, we'll dispatch the calculate totals. And as a result, both of those values will change in here, as well as in the total. So let's try to set this one up. And let's start by creating the function, calculate and then totals. Again, it's going to be our function, we'll access the state as far as the logic, let's go with let amount is equal to zero. And let's say not I have a tiny bug over here, well, then I want to copy and paste and let's just say total. So by default, it's always going to be zero and zero. Then we want to go with state, then cart items, let's iterate over. So we'll call this for each. And then we'll access each and every item. And each and every item has the amount and total property. And we just want to add this to the total amount. Therefore, we'll go with plus equals and then item and amount. Now, when it comes to the amount of money, we want to multiply the price that each item has with the amount of items we have in a card. So total is equal to, and now in this case, we'll go with plus equals item amount multiplied by item dot price. And once we have this one in place, up next, we want to set state amount equals to amount that we just set up. And the same goes with total. So let's go here. And let's say total is equal to total. And after that, we want to export that. So let's say calculate totals. And we just need to set it up in the app JS. So let's navigate to app JS. And in here, let's grab first the use selector and use dispatch, we'll need both of them. So let's say import, use dispatch, use selector, and we'll set it equal to from react redux. And also, I want to get that calculate totals. So let's say calculate totals that is coming from the features. Okay, beautiful. And as far as the logic, well, first, let's grab the card items, and we'll use use selector for that. So card items, now that is equal to use selector, let's pass in the function. And let's say here store is equal to store cart. And I'm not going to repeat myself, how we can access that. And also, we want to set up that dispatch. So const dispatch, and that is equal to use dispatch, let's invoke that. And let's finally set up that use effect. So let's say here, use effect. And then as far as the callback function, we will invoke this every time there's a change to the cart items. So every time we'll update something related to the cart items, we will invoke this use effect. 
Specifically, we want to go with dispatch and we want to pass in calculate totals. So check it out. Now we still have four here, but I can clearly see my total. And what's going to happen every time we'll click on any of the buttons and all that will nicely display whatever items we have in the card. Now there's a tiny bug over here. Basically, we need to set this one to fixed. Essentially, how many uh, numbers after that? And don't worry, we'll do that in a second. But the goal here is that now every time we remove item from the cart or we clear the cart altogether, it will affect the amount of items we have, which we display over here, and also the total. Now, in order to fix the bug there with too many numbers, we just need to go to cart container. And where we have the total, let's go with two fixed. So that's again, the JavaScript method that we have access to. And we'll say that we only want two numbers after the dot. So now everything is going to work. And just like that, we have calculate totals in place. And every time we'll make some changes to our cart, they will affect our initial state in the cart slice. All right, and up next, I want to set up a modal. And in the process, we'll create another slice. And we'll see how we can access data when we have multiple reducers in our store. And the first step is going to be creating a modal JS with the following code. And then we want to import that in the app JS and place it above the nav bar. So I'm going to start working on that where first I'm going to create model JS. Not going to set up any kind of imports in this case. We haven't set up the slice yet. So let's just create that component. And as far as the return, we want to go here with a side. And we want to add a class name of modal container. And as I said, if you're interested in the CSS, just please look for those classes in the index CSS, then we want to create a div with a class of modal inside of it, let's say heading four with the text of remove all items from your shopping cart. And after that, we want to go with button container where basically we'll place two buttons just to showcase how it's going to look like Let me go to complete one. And again, we'll display that once we try to clear the cart. So this is going to be the result. So right off 30 heading, we're going to go with div with a class of btn container inside of it, let's place two buttons. First one will be confirm one and the second one will be the clear one type for both of them will be button then class name btn. And I'll call this confirm btn. And as far as the text, I'm going to go with confirm as well. And the same deal with the clear one, we just want to change some values around where it's not going to be confirm is going to be cancel instead. And instead of confirm hyphen BTN, we're going to go with clear BTN. Now we want to go to app.js. We want to get this particular component. So I mean, let me try here with the auto import. Let's see, we have modal. Yep, that worked. And once we save, check it out, this is going to be our model. So we have the component. Now we just need to set up the logic. All right, and up next, let's set up the slice for the model. So remember, we have features folder. For the time being, we only have one feature, we have the cart. But now I want to add the modal feature, which is going to be located in the modal slice. And then we want to set up the functionality, where again, we're going to go with create slice, we want to set up some initial state. In this case, it's going to be is open. And I'll set it equal to false. Then we want to go with model slice, come up with name, initial state. And right away, let's set up those two reducers. We're going to go with open model and close model. We want to export that. And we also want to export model slice reducer. And in the store, we want to set up another key. Only in this case, it's going to be equal to this modal slice reducer. And as a result, we'll be able to access the state 
as well as the reducers all over our application. And the first thing that we'll do is in the app.js, we'll grab is open, and we'll display this one conditionally. So I'm going to go to the features, we want to create a new folder, let's call this modal, then we want to go with new file and we'll call this modal slice JS. And then inside of it, we first want to grab the create slice. So let's go here with create. And let's see whether it yep, gives me the import, then we want to set up the initial state. In my case, just going to be one property. Again, this is just a practice working with more realistic application where of course, there's going to be more features. So we're going to go here is open. And by default, let's set it equal to false, false, and then let's set up that slice. So const modal slice is equal to create slice, let's pass in the object name, modal, then initial state is equal to initial state. And let's right away set up those reducers. Now, what reducers we're going to have, we're going to have open modal reducer, which is going to be equal to state and action. Again, we're just practicing as far as the action, we're not going to use it. And in here, let's just say state is open. So if I want to open a model, what is going to be value? Well, might as well set it equal to true, kind of makes sense. Don't you think? Then let's copy and paste. And now we want to close a model. Now what is going to be the value for is open? Well, let's set it back to false. Then we want to export three things, the main reducer, and I'm not going to log it, we already have done that. So export default. Now, of course, we have different object, but the property we want to export meaning the method is still the same, we want to export the reducer, that's number one. And then remember those action creators. So we're going to go here with export const. And now we're looking for open modal, close modal, and both of them are coming from modal slice, and the actions. Now, in order for everything to work, we definitely, definitely, definitely need to go to store. So let's find where is that sucker over here. And then in the store, now we want to get the modal slice. So I have to change some things around this is going to be coming from the modal name will also be modal. This is going to be a modal reducer. And yes, of course, the property I'm going to go with modal as well. So modal will be equal to modal reducer. So that's good. Now let's try it out in our application on a big screen. And at the moment, we're calculating the totals. Notice, we have already two actions, not only the init, and we also run calculate totals. What I want to showcase though, is that instead of just cart, now we also have the modal. And now let's utilize that where in the app JS, not only I want to get the modal, I also want to access what I want to access is open. And I want to set this one up conditionally, since in the second, we'll add all of the functionality. So in here, remember, we were accessing the cart. So the only difference is that now I want to access the modal. And I'll say is open is open, and that will be equal not to the store cart, I'll say store modal. And where I have the modal, I'll have the conditional rendering, where I'll say is open, if it's true, only then display the model. So let's move it in. And since the value is false, we don't display the model. Now, if I'll manually go back to model slice, and I'll say that the value is true. I mean, you're not going to be surprised probably by the fact that we display the model. Okay, awesome. So now let's add that functionality where instead of just clearing the cart, why don't we open up the modal when we click on this button? And then once we get to the modal container, then we'll decide, do we really want to remove all the contents, and then close the model, or we simply want to close the model. So first, let's start in the cart container. And as I said, not yes, you'll find all of the logic here in the readme where First in the cart container, we want to get the open modal from the modal slice. 
and instead of clearing the card directly, we'll go dispatch and open model. And from there, we'll finish everything in the model just. So let's start in the card container. So we have all of these imports. Okay, that's awesome. But we want to copy and paste and we want to get open modal from the modal slice. So open modal and instead of cart slice, we're going to go here with modal and then modal slice. Then let's keep on moving. I don't think we actually need this import anymore. So we can remove it. And then where we have the clear cart, now let's pass in the open modal. Same deal, we invoke it. So that doesn't change. Now the difference, of course, is going to be that now once we click on clearing cart, we display the model. So now let's navigate there and let's handle that. So what first do we need over there? Well, we'll need quite a few things. First, we want to get the closed model because regardless on which button we click, I want to clear it. I want to get the use dispatch. I'll need it since I want to evoke some reducers. And I also want to get the clear cart. So notice how we're, again, we're getting this data from multiple slices, model slice and cart slice. And then of course, we'll just set up the functionality. So let's go back over here. Let's set up all those three imports. We're going to get the close modal, close modal. And I also want to get the clear cart, clear cart. And also we want to get the use dispatch. So let's see whether that is going to work. So use dispatch. Yep, I have all of them. So now I can remove these suckers. So then we want to quickly set up the dispatch, where effectively we just go with use dispatch and we invoke it. And now let's set up the functionality where if we click on the confirm, I want to do two things. Not only I want to clear the cart, but I also want to close the model. Now, if we go with cancel, then we'll just close the modal. So let's go here with button, we're going to go with on click. And then in here, let's pass in the function. And then we're not going to pass in any kind of argument, we'll just go with dispatch, then clear cart. That's the first thing we want to invoke. And then the second one and looks like I have some weird bug. Oh, yeah, over here. And the second thing, is the close model. So let's pass this one in. And I know I keep repeating this, but I really like the fact that we don't need to do any of that uh, manual labor, where we need to set up the actions and all that. In this case, we simply right away get those functions. And we pass in the dispatch, which obviously is way less time consuming, and also less chance for errors. So let's do the same thing with this button. And the only thing we want to change here is clear cart where we basically want to remove it. So if we confirm, then our cart is empty. If however, we just click on cancel, we close out the model. So that's how we can add another feature to our application. All right. And now let's see how we can set up a synchronous functionality with a redux toolkit. So here's the plan. So I have Quarters API, basically an API that serves some JSON data just so we can practice on fetching data. And in the use reducer project, we already work with this URL. So it's course API and then react use reducer card project, which essentially returns the same data that we currently have in the card items. So use this URL to fetch data when initially our application loads. And here's the thing, we cannot just simply set this up in our current reducers, it's not going to work. That's why with Redux toolkit, we install another library, the thunk one. And from the Redux toolkit, we get this create async thunk. And we right away want to invoke it. And the result we want to export so this is something that will require directly in our components. So it's very similar to how we exported the action creators from the reducers. However, in this case, we export this directly. In my case, I'm going to call this get cart items. So we invoke create async thunk. 
and it's looking for two things for the action type. So essentially, in here, we just come up with a name of our action. And second is going to be that callback function. Now, in the following video, I'll show you more options. But at the very least, we pass here this function. And this function needs to return a promise. Um, I'm just using fetch to fetch data. And remember, when we go with fetch dot, then we return basically a success response. And with catch, of course, it's going to be the error. But regardless from this function, we're automatically returning the promise. This is what the callback function is looking for. It's looking for that promise. And of course, you're not limited to the just fetch, you can set up all kinds of things in here. But just remember that this function needs to return a promise. So of course, if you just stick a sync in front of it, then by default, it's going to return promise, which is something that we'll take a look at in the next video. And then in the fetch, I want to pass in the URL. So the one that gets me the product. And when it comes to this callback function, it returns a life cycle actions. So if you remember, when we work with promises, we had few options. Promise could be pending, it can be fulfilled and rejected. So where we have the create slice, what we want to do is set up extra reducers property, it's going to be an object. And then in order to access those life cycle actions, the syntax is like this, where we go with name, what we're getting back, and then dot pending fulfilled and rejected. And yes, these need to match to the T because they are provided by the Redux toolkit. And then we want to enclose this with the square brackets. And then we'll set this equal to a function. So what do we want to do when we're pending, basically when we're loading, and that's why we have the state value is loading, and we'll set it equal to true, then what do we want to do if we're successful. And this is the case where the data that we're returning, in the case of success, in our case, response that JSON is going to be located in the action payload. And of course, we'll log it just so you can see. So once we have successfully data, we want to set is loading to false and card items to the actual payload. And if there's some kind of error, we have rejected option. And in that case, for this application, we just want to set is loading to false. And also keep in mind that when it comes to fetch, 404 is not an error. So we'll only have this one, if there's some kind of network error. And at the very last, we want to grab get card items in the app app component. And then when our application loads, we want to do two things, we want to dispatch get card items. So the asynchronous function. And then we also want to grab is loading from the state. And while we're loading, we'll display this. And once we're successful, we'll set the state card items equal to the data that we're getting back. So let's try this one out where I'm going to go to card slice. And first, I want to grab that create a sync thunk. So that one is coming from Redux toolkit, then I want to set up the URL. So right after the import, let's go here with const URL. And you have two options, you can either get it from readme or you can just navigate here in the browser. So since I already have it open in the browser, I'll use this approach. So again, this is the URL, where we can fetch those products, just like we have in the card items. And then let's keep on scrolling. And we'll go with create a sync thunk, and we'll set it equal to our function, but we want to right away export this. So let's say const get card items, and that is equal to create a sync thunk. And like I said, it's looking for two things, the type. So in here, we just need to come up with a name. In my case, I'm going to go with cart forward slash get cart items. So that's going to be my action. And second will be that callback function. And here, let's right away go with return, fetch, let's pass in the URL, then dot then. So if we're successful, I want to turn this into a JSON. So say response, response, JSON, let's invoke that. 
and then let's also go with catch and don't worry in the next video we'll take a look at more reasonable approach how to handle this but for time being i just want to get that data from the url so let's go here with error and then log that sucker and once we are done we want to keep on scrolling and in the create slice right after reducers the property name is extra reducers notice we right away get that suggestion and like i said then we get those life cycle actions so for every function that we will create in this case it is get card items we'll get those three life cycle actions pending fulfilled and rejected and the way we can access that we go with the same name so get card items in this case and then notice we right away have those options fulfilled pending and rejected so in my case i'm going to start with pending that is while we're still loading and in this function same way we can access the state and also we can get the action so action is going to be useful once we get the data for now while we're pending we just want to grab the state and i want to set the state is loading value equal to what equal to true correct so while we're loading is loading will be equal to true then we want to copy and paste like so just want to add the commas so there's no bugs in here and we want to change these ones around but instead of pending now i'm looking for fulfilled and in this case i do want to add another parameter which is going to be action and again this action will contain the result if we're successful so in this case if we're successful we return the json response and what i'm going to do is set my cart items so state and then cart items equal to what well, action and payload and yes let's also log it just so you can see where it's coming from but i can tell you right away that there's a payload property and that's the one that holds those cart items so let's log the action and lastly we also have rejected and like I said, since we're using fetch, it's only for network errors. And for time being, we'll set this equal to false. And also, there's a tiny issue here. Once we have the data, of course, the loading will be false. So we don't need to export this. We're actually in good shape. We already export that function here with export. Now we just want to go to app.js. We want to grab the function get cart items we want to invoke it once our application loads and we also want to check for is loading so let's navigate to app.js and since we already import the calculate totals from the cart slice simply want to add a comma and we'll go with get cart items and then let's keep on moving not only i want to get the cart items i also want to check for is loading so if we're loading then We'll display different return and then let's set up a different use effect where i'm going to go with use effect and i'll invoke it only when my application loads so once my application loads what do i want to do i want to dispatch and we'll go with get cart items and we will invoke it let's also set up that return where basically if we're loading this is what we want to return. We want to go with div with class of loading and then heading one loading. So let's set it up here. If is loading is true, then we want to go with return. Then let's set up the div here. Let's add a class of loading. And then inside of it, we're going to go with heading one and loading dot dot dot. And once we save for a second, we'll notice that loading and then we get the product. And if you don't believe me, Let's navigate to the big screen over here. Let's refresh and then let's check it out. In here, we have the pending, which is going to be for that loading one. And we can clearly see our state. So notice how awesome it is in the Redux DevTools where you can clearly see your actions. So what actions we're dispatching and what is the state at that time. And we can even see the difference. So basically, if I'm going to go here with fulfilled, Notice this is going to be the difference. So in the cart, we basically get this is loading and we set it equal to false. And also in the console, we can see what we're getting back. 
Remember, I said that once we log over here in the cart slice, we are logging the action. So what is in this action, it is a payload. And that's the data that we're getting back. So we have this array of four items, we set here, state card items equal to the payload. So again, something we can definitely double check over here. So if I go here with state, notice with fulfilled, for example, this is going to get me those card items, those four card items. And one more thing that we can actually do is go back to the cart slice and set this equal to an empty array. So the card items, and that way you'll clearly see how we can change this once the data gets here asynchronously. So let's navigate back again. Let's refresh just so we are on the safe side. And if we go right now with action fulfilled, and if we take a look at the difference, now I'll notice two things. First of all, is loading changed from true to false? And also notice how we switch the card items. So initially, it was empty array. And now essentially, we get those four items. And again, all of our functionality still works, we can clearly see that in our actions over here. But now we're getting this data asynchronously, once our application loads. All right. And lastly, I just want to showcase what options we have with the callback function. Because in our previous example, we just looked at the most basic setup. So now let's go over the more complex one. And don't worry, in this video, you don't have to type along. And in fact, we won't use any of this extra data in our current application. The goal is to simply get the gears in your head turning and showcase large amount of options we have. And first, what I want to do is install another library, the HTTP library by the name of Axios, because I do want to showcase how essentially we can return a value for the error. And since fetch is not responding to 404, basically for fetch, the 404 errors are not errors. I actually want to use the Axios instead. Again, if you don't want to do that, you can just sit back and relax. Where I'm going to go with npm install Axios first then we definitely want to spin up the dev server, of course, so npm start, let me close this one, then we want to navigate to cart slice, I think I can remove the items, we won't need it anymore. So axios from axios, let's keep on moving. And before we do anything, like I said, we can create this function right away as a sync, which essentially just means that we'll right away return a promise, correct? So we'll go here with async. And that also means that we can await so we can set up more logic. So let me remove all of this code here. And let's just go with try and catch right away, since we can also do that. And then let's wait for that response. So I'm going to say here const, and then response is equal to await. Now I'm going to go with axios. And then I'll pass in the URL. And if we're successful, what do we want to do? We want to return that response. Again, keep in mind, we are returning a promise. And yes, we're handling that in the X reducers. So none of this functionality changes right now. We're just switching right now, our create a sync thunk callback function to a sync where we're using Axios. Now once we save, we will get some errors in console. Don't worry about it. The reason for that is because when it comes to axios, the data is located in the data property. And just to showcase that, let me go here with log, and then response. And you'll see in a console. If you scroll up, you'll notice over here, this is what we're getting back. And essentially, what we want to do, we want to pass in this data property down to these lifecycle actions. So we're talking about this one over here. So let's scroll up. And we'll go here with return. And let's go with response, and then data again. This is just because that's how the response is structured. So once we save notice how everything worked correctly, where again, we're getting those items. And if we take a look at the action, it's still the same thing. We're getting this payload. 
and the payload is that array. So that's the first thing that I want to mention. Also, well, we can pass here the arguments. Now, what does that mean? Well, in our case, we're not going to use that. But we need to imagine that let's say, we're going to be setting up some kind of functionality, and we do want to pass here, the value, let's say whether that is a user or some kind of parameter or something. So in this case, I'm just going to say random. And if we want to access that again, in our case, it's not going to change anything. But if we want to access that, this is going to be the first parameter. So in my case, I'm going to go with name. And let's simply log that. And we'll clearly see that we can access that value again, not something we'll use in our application. But it's very, very important, because there's going to be applications, where of course, this is going to be important. The fact that we can pass something here from our component, and we can access it in our create async thunk. That's the first thing that I want to mention. Now, second, we also have access to thunk API. Again, you can name it differently. But I mean, common convention is calling this thunk API, which gives us even more options. Now, what am I talking about? Well, first of all, let's log something. Let's go with log, then let's access thunk API. And you know what, let's just log the entire thing. So you know what, there's quite a few things here in the console. So let me remove this action. Basically, I'll comment this one out for your reference. And also, hopefully, it's clear how we can pass the parameters from the components. So that's clear. But then check it out. We have this somewhat giant object with bunch of useful things. So here's the thing, we could get the state. Now what's interesting, we're getting the state of the entire application. And this should get the wheels turning in your head. Because that means that we can get any values from the rest of the features. So let me quick click quickly showcase that. So I'm going to go with log and then thunk API. And then let's go with get state and let's invoke it. And in the console, I have both. I have the values for the cart as well as the model. So imagine if you have, for example, a user feature, where you're setting up the user, yes, when you're setting up your async action, you can actually access it. So I can set up the user in a different feature. And I can still access it with the help of this Thunk API, which is very, very, very powerful. And also what's interesting, well, we can dispatch. If we take a look at the object over here, notice we have this dispatch option. So what we can dispatch? Well, for example, let's open up the modal while we're fetching. So let's try this one out. We're right after the get state and all that. Let me go here. And we're going to go with Thunk. API, we're going to go with dispatch. And now we want to pass in open and modal. Again, something that is not even in our slice. And check it out. And as I said, I forgot to add here, the parentheses, notice, even though this reducer is not even in this feature, we can still access it with Thunk API. And I know you're sick of hearing this. This is extremely powerful, because we can do all kinds of functionality in the create async thunk. And lastly, what I want to showcase is how we can return a specific response, because at the moment, yes, we have catch, and we are basically getting the error. But normally, from the API, you'll get some kind of specific message. So first of all, how we can pass this through again, we're going to look for thunk API. And we want to go here with the return first of all, and then the property or the method you're looking for. So let's go here with thunk API is reject with value. So in this case, I will hard code this. But keep in mind that normally with Axios, it's going to be located in error dot response. So in here, let's say something went wrong like so. And then let's keep on moving, let's keep on moving. And where we have the rejected, now we can look for that action. In our case, again, we don't have 
any error values in the state or nothing like that. But let's just log whether we can see that action, whether we can see that everything works. And since we are using Axios, now I can mess up the URL. And for Axios, it will be an error. What that means, well, we'll trigger this and we'll basically pass this value down to our rejected. So let's save it. And then notice in the console, we right away see this log. And we have this payload where we have something went wrong. So for example, if we're getting some kind of error from the API, it's going to be located an error response, and we can nicely pass this down using Thunk API, and then reject with the value. So that's how we can set up asynchronous functions with Redux toolkit. And this concludes our tutorial. Hopefully everyone enjoyed it. And I'll see you in next videos.